Okay, we're going to talk about the clavicle and answer the questions, what is the clavicle, what are its primary bony landmarks, and what are some reasons to learn about it. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. To begin, the clavicle is also known as the collarbone. It's known as the collarbone because it forms a collar around the area, well, it forms a collar of bones around the area where your t-shirt collar is. And it also helps form part of your pectoral girdle with the scapula. And if we look at this right clavicle, blow it up in an anterior view, on the bottom lateral third, there's something called the conoid tubercle. This little bony prominence is an attachment for the conoid ligament, which is part of the uh, corcoroclavicular ligament. Next, we see that the clavicle has two ends. The lateral end is called the acromial end because it articulates with the acromion, forming the acromial clavicular joint. Medially, the medial end is called the sternal end, which articulates with the sternum, and that forms the sternoclavicular joint, which has a very important functional or structural function. We see that the clavicle connects the upper limb to the trunk. Now, what that means is the following. Here's a cross-section of the right shoulder joint. There is the humerus, which articulates with the scapula, and it looks like the whole upper limb is just floating on the rib cage, but that's not the case. If we see in this superior view of the right shoulder, there's the humerus, and that humerus and its associated arm, forearm, and hand articulate with the scapula. And the scapula articulates with the clavicle, and the clavicle articulates with the sternum at the sternoclavicular joint. That is the only bony attachment for the upper limb. All the other attachments deal with muscles, like the trapezius and so forth. So let's take this anterior view of the right uh, clavicle and now see a superior view. And you see that the clavicle is S-shaped like this, which has increased resiliency. Because what happens is the clavicle serves as a strut, a rigid support, keeping the scapula and the upper limb away from the thorax, basically stabilizing, helping stabilize that upper limb. And what we see is that the clavicle transmits the shocks or the impacts from all the upper limb to the axial skeleton. So here we have an example of someone doing a handstand and all the force from the arms going up and the body pushing down uh, are then transmitted to the clavicles. And so what happens if someone then say falls on an outstretched hand and their arm hits the ground, all that force is transmitted up the upper limb and focused on the clavicle. When that happens, you get a clavicular fracture. You'll notice that, that the, the clavicle is weakest in the middle to the lateral third of that clavicle. So when you get a clavicular fracture, the, the medial part is elevated because of the contraction of the sternocleidomastoid, and the lateral part, which is no longer attached to the clavicle, drops because now that upper limb has no bony attachment to the trunk. So what happens then is often you'll then take uh, people to uh, help is they'll have like these bandages that keep the shoulder up or a sling that helps to keep the shoulder up and stabilize until it heals. Let's do a bit of a review. So there we have the lateral end of the clavicle is called the acromial end and the medial end of the clavicle is called the sternal end. And that, my friends, is the clavicle in a nutshell.